want. Uh, all the kids already know the drill. Like, my kid doesn't even wait for the, you know, the, the video. He's like, video, I'm, I'm out of here, right? So uh, he asked me in the earlier service, he's like, uh, Dad, is there kids' classes? And then the video started, and he's like, yep, there is. I, I didn't even answer. He answered his own question and then took off. So um, listen, I'm glad you're here. I, I have um, a word for, for us today. I believe God wants to do a miracle. If you're in this house, um, I don't know how you came or, you know, how you're feeling. Uh, we all have our own walks, and each walk, you know, everybody's world is different. So let's just pray, and, and let's uh, go right into God's Word this morning, or this afternoon. Dear, dear Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this amazing time of worship. Lord, for the declaration that we are in the right place, in the place where miracles happen, in the place where your move is here. Lord, so we are surrounded by, by other like-minded individuals that believe that we are here to receive a healing and restoration, just a miracle, Lord. Thank you for what you're going to speak through your Word into our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. <clears throat> Amen. Listen, um, everybody, everybody lives their own, in, in their own bubble. On, on Wednesday, I uh, picked up my son from school. Um, he is about to be seven. He's in first grade. Picked him up from school. First thing out of his mouth is like, hey, did mom make something to eat? I'm like, that's my son. He thinks just like his dad. It could, we could just be having lunch, and I'm already asking my wife, like, what's for dinner? She hates it. That's like a pet peeve of her. She's like, can we just enjoy lunch, right? So when he, he asked, the first thing he asked, he's like, Dad, did Mom cook anything? And I'm like, no, actually, she's busy, but I can make you one of my famous uh, turkey and cheese sandwiches, right? He loves my sandwiches. I believe they're better than my wife's because I actually put mayo on both sides, you know, on the bottom bread and the top bread. She only does it on one bread. Who does that? Like, that's not even, anyway. So I, I lay on a little extra. Sometimes I turn on the grill and I just make it, you know, I let the mayonnaise do a little tss on the grill. You know, I'm getting hungry just talking. Anyway, so I said, I'm going to make you one of my famous sandwiches. Perfect. And then the conversation changed a little bit. He said, hey, uh, Dad, you remember the kid that was bothering me in the bus? Ooh, at, the, at that moment, I'm like, what's up? Did he do something? Do, do I need to turn this car around right now? Do, you know, do I need to show him what's up, right? How old is this kid? He's, a, he's, in, he's in third grade. I'm like, nobody messes with my baby. This third grader is about to know who the pastor is. No. <laughs> so, so I said, what happened, mijo? What, what's going on? What, what do you do? Did he bother you again, right? And he said, dad, no, uh, he didn't bother me. Actually, he's been fine. And I'm like, things are okay in the bus? He's like, things are fine. Uh, he said, they moved me to another section. It's fine. He's like, but I heard, I heard him uh, today, and he was talking about, you know, he went to the office twice recently to see the principal. So my son was, you know, uh, hearing this conversation. Uh, I think it was with the bus driver, and he, he said, you know, he's gotten in trouble lately. He's been to the office twice to see the principal. So, okay. And he said, Dad, but I also found out that um, his mom passed away recently. And he's been living with his grandparents. And at that moment, you know, when a first grader is talking about, you know, uh, uh, his, his enemy just two weeks prior. But he's talking about in a manner of empathy, in a manner of like, Dad, he's going through some stuff. I just found out. And at that moment, you know, my heart can get tender. Uh, I'll cry at, for any good Pixar movie. You know, and, and, and you know, when, when my son was saying those things, uh, I just kind of had to turn around, you know, because part of me was living in my world. My world, he's got mom and dad. He's hungry. He's waiting for a sandwich or something that mom normally cooks. And, and you know, he has, he has trouble, right? He, he had a little bully in, in school, but... For the most part, he's got a good life. You know, he's got good genes. I mean, you know. And, and, and but, but, uh, but then on the other side, in, in my mind, this kid is a bully. He is older. He is bigger. He's picking on somebody younger, somebody weaker. You know, in my mind, you know, they don't, they don't teach him right at home. 
His parents don't, don't teach him how to, you know, respect other kids. And then my world just changed, and now I'm looking at a young kid who goes home and doesn't have a mom to cook for him, relies on the grandparents. And then at night, I'm like, who is, who is uh, tucking him in? Is it grandma and grandpa? If there's any grandma and grandpas here, I know you guys love the grandchildren, but you love your grandchildren because you can send them back, right? I mean, you don't want them there forever. <laughs> and, and my world just turned. I'm like, could he be crying every night he goes to bed, wishing he had his mom to hug one last time, to read him a bedtime story, to tell him things are going to be all right, to teach him good from wrong, to help study with his homework. And you see, we all live in our own bubbles, and our own world, and our world can tend to hurt us. Our world can tend to, to bring traumatic event. Our world can, can bring stress and anxiety and so many things that we didn't see coming. Uh, 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 wake up and the tire is flat, or you name it, what, whatever it may be. Last, uh, last week, Jaime brought a, a wonderful word to us, and, and today I want to just piggyback off of that as we continue to go deeper and, and deeper into healing, deeper into, into healing. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, I told you about this amazing, uh, this amazing book by uh, Charles Dickens, and, and Charles Dickens tells in, in, his, in, in, in this book um, that uh, he has a character named Ms. Havisham. And he recalls in this story, this story, and he says that, you know, on the day of her wedding, on the day of her wedding, she received a letter from who, her fiancé, and her fiancé, it was 8.40 in the morning, she was just putting on her wedding dress, and in this letter, he is betraying her and leaving her, and she is very upset, and she begins to have the worst day of her life. She feels defraud, alone. As you can imagine, being, uh, getting, getting ready for your best day in your life and turning into the worst day of her life. And, and the story continues to, to tell us how she stayed stuck in that moment. She continued for the rest of her life to wear the wedding dress every day. What are you wearing tomorrow? A wedding dress. What about the day after that? A wedding dress. But we're going to Walmart. A wedding dress. Or we're going to somebody's party. A wedding dress. But we're going to go see the Canelo fight, a wedding dress, right? And, and so not only that, but every clock in her, in her house was set to 840. And I don't know about you, even though this is a fictional story, we can tend to get stuck in, in those moments. We can tend to, to get imprisoned in those moments, those moments that, that have hurt us emotionally, those moments that have hurt us spiritually even. A couple of weeks ago, we talked about being church hurt. And that only means is that being hurt from somebody from church. <laughs> you know, we, sometimes we're like, I'm, I don't mind getting hurt from a heathen. I don't mind getting hurt from somebody else, but somebody from the house of God or a leader hurts me, right? Yeah, it's just unexpected. And, 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 but it may be a, re, a relational thing that you got stuck. Maybe your husband left you and now you're stuck and you're like, I am never believing in men again. I'm never going to open my heart to, un, to, to new love. I've had it. I don't know if you've ever experienced those moments or if maybe you're going through, through a time right now where you feel stuck in a moment emotionally, spiritually, or relationally. But today I want to talk to you again, as we have been these past few weeks, about how to recover from that. If you didn't hear the message last week, Jaime talked about the first thing, and, and you can write it down as, as my first point, but really you should go listen to, to last week's message. But he talked about in order for you to heal, you must reveal what's hurting inside. Uh, uh, so if you're taking notes, the first thing you can write is reveal your heart. How do we heal from hurt? By revealing 
our heart. And, and it's not just, uh, you know, you got you to gotta find out who you're revealing your heart to. That, that matters, right? So, uh, Psalms chapter uh, 47 verse 3 says, he, talking about God, heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. We need to take our pain, we need to take our, our hurt, we need to take our past trauma, we need to take all of that, and, and we need to take it to, to God and reveal our heart to Him. Uh, Psalms 50, uh, verse 15 says, Then call on me when you are in trouble, and I will rescue you, and you will uh, give me glory. God wants to rescue you from trouble. God wants to heal you from whoever hurt you, whoever wounded you, whatever you've been through. But in order for that to happen, you have to expose it. So Jaime went on to, to talk about how, you know, uh, uh, Naaman uh, was a, a very wealthy individual. Uh, 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 he had soldiers under his command and people under his command. And so he wore this armor and Jesus said, uh, not Jesus, uh, the, the prophet told him, hey, you have to go to this river. And it was like the ugliest river, right? The ugliest side of town. It's like, hey, you could have said, go over to Lake Travis, go over to Destin Beach. No, you said, go to the dirtiest Galveston water, you know. You laugh because you've been there, right? Yeah. You go in with a white shirt and come out with a gray shirt. You go in there again and come out. Now it's brown. Now it's tan. You go in one more time and it's just black now. It's, it's over. So I made that mistake a couple times. but So, so we're black. Okay, take notes for travel, travel notes. When you go, okay, so listen, uh, he, he, so he sent him to like a, an ugly, ugly uh, uh, a place to, to go. And in order for him to receive healing, he had to take off his, uh, his armament. A and uh, it was illustrated wonderfully. I don't want to get into this point because all that happened is he had to expose his wounds, his hurt, his bodily wounds in order to go in and receive healing. In order for us to receive healing from pain, from trauma, from past events, we must reveal our heart. And let me tell you, if you take it to God, if you take your trouble to God, if you take your hurt to God, you are not going to surprise him. He's not going to be like, oh, really that happened to you? I've never heard that before. I've never seen it. Oh, my God, that is bad. You're not going to surprise him. You're not going to offend him. Bring him the hurt. You can bring it in the form of anger. You see it in the Bible where King David would sometimes like just talk to God from a place of anger. Lord, why? Lord, why did this happen to me? It's okay. Just if you want to, in order to, to heal something, it must get revealed. Must get, and that's why many times I'm, I'm a huge proponent of therapy. You guys know that. And, and many times some of the stuff that happens in, in therapy when you're seeing a counselor is like, okay, tell me about your childhood. Tell me about the first time you felt that pain or the first time, you know, you relive all the traumatic events because in order for you to heal, you must reveal what is hurting? And, and, and today, I, I want to tell you, can we just expose it to, to God? Can we expose our trouble to God, our pain to God? James chapter 5 uh, uh, talks about, uh, it says, confess your sins to each other so that you may pray for one another and you will be healed. You guys know we're starting a semester of small groups. And in small, uh, and in life groups, really, you get the opportunity, you know, to hang out with Folks that are looking for for uh, uh, Christ, looking for a, a step, their next step in their spiritual journey. Some may be just starting off. Some are, you know, well ahead of us. But we're we're looking for healing in small groups because that's when we can take off our mask. That's when we can be real. That's when we can expose and say, "Hey, guys, even though I was singing at church and saying." Uh, this is a house of miracles, and God bless you, and I'm so glad to be here. On the inside, I was a wreck. On the inside, I didn't want to go. On the inside, I was worried about my finances, or I was worried about my relationship, or I'm stressed about w whatever it may be. But this is a place where you can be real and expose 
some of that pain in order to get healing. It's interesting that we take our, we take our sin to Christ. He forgives us of our sin. He wipes our, our slate, right? But then the Bible says, in order for you to be healed, you have to go to other people. You see, it's a process. God forgives, but then we have trouble forgetting. God forgave me, God cleaned me, but I'm still mad at somebody that did me wrong. I'm still upset. They still owe me. They still did me wrong. You, 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 you didn't know what they did to me. They laughed at me. They ridiculed me. Whatever it may be. And, and, and so before I even move on to point number two, I, I want you to think about joining a small group. Maybe a couples group. It may be a men's group or a, a, a young adults or a youth group. Uh, uh, do it. M- my son uh, yesterday was hanging out with some, with some other teenagers, and he's like, maybe I'll start a small group. I'm like, do it. It, it, it doesn't take too much more other than wanting to. We'll help you get material. We'll help you, you know, uh, coach you along the way. But you need to have somebody that you can reveal your heart to. Reveal it to God. Re- reveal it to other people that, that can help you heal. Number two, the second thing I want you to, to write, write notes on is, is uh, let it go. Let go of those who hurt you. I, I was tempted to sing the let it go song. Let it go. Let it go. We recently, this summer we went to um, Disney and Hollywood Studios actually, and there was such a good, <laughs> it was, it, there was such a good like musical part of, of this Let It Go, and we loved the two people that were presenting. Basically, it was like a sing-along thing. So, so there was two people that were narrating the whole Frozen movie, and then they would play along the, the sing-along. And when you got to that part, Let It Go, there was a, there was a couple right behind me, and, and, and the wife elbows the husband who's holding one of, the, one of their kids and says, babe, there's your song, babe. Sing it, babe, your favorite song, babe. And I busted out laughing because, you know, this is a grown man. And I turned around and I'm like, yeah, babe, sing it, babe. <laughs> and, of course, you know, he sang it. And, and before you knew it, we were all, let it go, let it go. The second thing I want you to write down is to let go of those who hurt you. We expose, as, as Jaime talked about last week, but we also let, need to let go of those who hurt us. We may think that but if, we, if we stop remembering, then, then how can they pay for what they did to us? But if, I'm not the, if I don't remember that, then how are they ever going to pay? Don't worry about that. You're the only one that's being, that's being hurt by holding on to that. That person may not even realize you're still mad, that you're still hurting. They're tailgating at the Texans game right now. They're just having a good old time, and you are here on the inside just holding on to what they did to you three years ago, to the time they didn't talk to you, or they posted that thing on on Instagram, and you just knew they were talking about you. You guys are a little quiet. Does that hit a little too close to home? I'm going to keep moving because... You cannot have a, a spiritually healthy life if you don't have an emotionally and a mental healthy life. We can't say we're spiritually mature and healthy, but then emotionally still have rage and anger and still wanna, want people to pay and still want, we still hold grudges and we still hold pain inside. So today the million dollar question is, Do you want to improve? Do you want to heal? Or do you want to get even? Because you can't have both. You will realize that if you ever get even, that still doesn't take away the pain. If you ever get even, it's still not going to be enough. So today, what are you going to choose? Are you going to choose to heal? Are you going to choose to improve your life, or are you going to choose to get even? The choice is yours. The choice is yours. In order for us to heal, we must forgive. Maybe you're here to tell me, but they deserve for me to be mad. You don't know how much they, they, they wronged me. You don't know how much they disrespected me. 
I was sharing with the, with the morning service uh, how I, I used to go to school here in Garfield Elementary just a couple blocks away. And, and um, a lot of great minds have come out of there like this one. But um, I remember uh, well, we lived in the apartments across the street. I was in, in about fourth, fifth grade, and I was walking home, and, and I, I still have a huge accent. If you think I have an accent now, I, I had it thick then. And I was walking home, and I, am, I remember Juan, for some reason, he just didn't like me. I really can't recall why, but I remember Juan had another buddy, and we were walking home, and he had his other buddy have my hands behind, you know, kind of get, get me from behind. And then Juan started punching my stomach. And before I knew it, I was there crying. I couldn't even yell because, you know, when they punch you and the air comes out. And I was, just, I was just sitting there, couldn't even yell or cry. or You know, I was just, you know, sitting there just a couple apartments from my house. I can choose, am I still going to be mad at Juan and his buddy, whoever his name was? Am I going to hold on to that? Juan's over there having a good old time. But I'm over here still holding a grudge, still hoping, man, I, I, hope, I hope Juan is in jail right now. I hope, he, I hope he had everything he had coming. I need to choose forgiveness. So today I want you to go to Romans chapter 5 with me. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Um, let me pull it up because I actually didn't have it on my notes. Chapter 5, verse 8. It says, but God showed his great love for us that by, by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Remember, do they deserve for us to be mad if they wronged us? If they did something evil? Yeah, we could be mad. But guess what? God could have been mad at us too. But he chose that even though we were sinners, even though we were wrong, even though uh, our life wasn't wasn't right and he knew that he was going to die for us we're going to go to church and we're going to say i accept christ and then we're still going to go off on our path and still be you know uh, uh, uh not doing the right thing he chose to forgive us anyway we don't deserve his forgiveness we don't deserve his love but he loves us anyway and he forgave us anyway and, and so we we've, we've you've heard me say before that hurt people hurt people today i want to tell you that forgiven people forgive people so if we are forgiven by God, we should also forgive. So go to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 and 32. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 and 32 says, Get rid of all bitterness, get rid of rage, get rid of anger, get rid of harsh words, get rid of slander, and any types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, it says, forgiving one another as God, Christ has forgiven you. Forgiven people, forgive people. And if God has forgiven you, and God has forgiven your sin, and God has forgiven your mistakes, and God has forgiven any wrongdoing we have had, anytime we doubted him, anytime we talked about him, anytime we were angry at him, if God can forgive it all, then we can forgive as well. Forgiven people, forgive people. Third point I want to tell you is that we need to replace the old with the new. We need to replace the old with the new. If, if you ever get a chance, I highly encourage that, that, you, know, that, you, that you read s several best-selling books that have, to, that have to do with habit. One is by James Clear, uh, the author James Clear, and talks about atomic ha habits. And so one of the things he talks about is, hey, you want to you wanna have better habits in your life, right? So then you have to replace the bad habits with the good habits. You have to have something that replaces that with. So, for example, maybe you want to not have the bad habit of watching three hours of YouTube every night or three hours of TikTok or whatever it is that you like and you want to read more. So you replace that with a book. You replace that and, and you put on your phone focus mode or do not disturb and you buy a book and you have it handy and you replace the one habit with the other 
right? And then he talks about having goals and having, uh, you know, rewarding yourself for doing that kind of stuff. I think I'm doing it wrong because, you know, I, I get on a diet, but then I reward myself by going to a buffet. I, I don't think that's how it works, but, I'm, you know, so still pray for me. But, you know, he, 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 he talks about building habits. So replacing the old with replacing the new. And so today, I want to tell you, we need to replace the, our, our old way of thinking with the truth of God. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, do not copy the behavior and the customs of this world. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Uh, then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasant and perfect. So if we are to be transformed, we are to transform our mind with God's truth. So instead of thinking that we are just no good immigrants, that we are Latinos and are lower class citizens, that we can go to God's truth where it says, hey, uh, I'm not a sinner and I'm not a slave to sin. I am forgiven. I am a child of God. I am chosen. And guess what? I am an heir. One of the, one of the things that I was learning about over the last two weeks as as uh, Queen Diana uh, passed away and she's getting laid to rest, you guys have seen the news, uh, is that um, th the title changes. So immediately, King Charles, the Prince Charles, became king, and, and which, which meant that now both of his children, not just, uh, uh, not just his oldest son, but also Prince Harry, and his wife, Megan, Marco, now their kids inherited titles. And one of the things that was interesting as I was kind of watching about that is that the son of the king immediately inherited over $1 billion worth of assets. The minute he became the next in line to the throne, he inherited over a $1 billion worth of assets, and that includes diamonds and all kinds of amazing things that they have. And I started thinking about that because some of the pain and some of the trauma is based on who people label me to be or who people have said that I was. And maybe at some point, I believed it too. Maybe at some point, it just kind of stuck and, 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 and I absorbed that label. Maybe at some point, I, I didn't realize that the moment I gave my life to Christ, now I have an, inherit, an inheritance. So now, it's like I, I wasn't an inheritance, I wasn't an heir before. But when I gave my life to Christ, now I am a prince of the king. And there's a whole inheritance that comes around. So I, I, I don't need to worry about the king doesn't just, he's not the king of, over an island. He's not the king over a, 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 a country. He's not the king over a thousand cattle. We're talking about the king of kings and lord of lords. We're talking about the inheritance of the creator of the universe. Not just England, not just the United States, not just the world, the galaxies, the any other worlds that may exist around, things that I can't even comprehend, things that I don't even know about. Now I'm an inher now I have some inheritance in that and you see it changes the way you think because before I would worry about okay I, I, I'm an American citizen do you have your green card do you have your passport are you good to go right but but now what what I have is the truth which is I have everlasting life I, my, my inheritance is out of this world. And you know what? I, not, not, I don't worry about having, having the king of... I, I, don't, I don't worry about having possessions here for a lifetime that may last 70, 80, 90 years when I'm going to spend eternity in mansions and with the king of kings and lord of lords, uh, lord of of all 
So if we replace the bad with the good, we see that we are chosen, we are heirs, we are forgiven, we are a new creation, we are loved, and nothing can separate us from the love of God, and we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us, and we are more than conquerors, and we are masterpieces. So when somebody comes up to me, and they want to make me feel like a second-class citizen, or they want to make me feel like I'm below, I'm like, listen, you don't know who my daddy is. You don't know who my dad is. And, and, and the other thing that, that I noticed during these processions is that, you know, when, when, the, when the, now the king and all his, his sons, all the, the princesses and everybody that's kind of related to the royal family, when they're hitting the streets and they're walking, and even now as, as, as they're honoring the queen, they have guards all over them. These are the royal guards. These aren't like the military, and these are like top elite level making more money and no more karate than everybody else. These are like elite uh, royal guards that they have around them at all times. And, and, now I can, and now I can say, hey, I am, the, I, I am the son of the king and I am an heir to everlasting riches and, and, and to the one who owns the whole universe. And guess what? And his angels are watching over me at all times. And that is what's up. You want to mess with me, you mess with my dad. You want to talk about me, you're talking about a whole kingdom. You want to talk about me, you know, I'm not going to take vengeance in my own hands. I'm, he, knows, he knows my tears. He knows my trauma. He knows my, my trouble. I reveal to him everything that I've gone to, and I am forgiven, and I am a new creation, and you can say whatever you like about me. You can say I'm too short or too tall or too skinny or too big. You can say that to, to you I am one thing or another. It doesn't matter to me because I know the truth that is here and he says I'm a masterpiece and he says I'm forgiven and he says I am loved so you can say you hate me but God loves me God's promises to us are true God promises to give us rest and to give us strength and to give us all that we need and God promises to answer our prayers and God promises to give us provision and he promises to protect us and pr he promises to free us from sin and he promises to give us eternal life so today what I want you to do number one we're going to reveal our heart to God we're going to reveal it to one another through a small group we're going to release the hurt. We're going to release the people that hurt us. And we're going to replace the, our old way of thinking with God's truths. We're going to do that because we are not in it to get even. We are here to get healthy. We are here to get, get made whole. And the last thing I want you to write down is we're going to focus on the future. One of the things that, you know, these, these habit people like to talk about is having the end goal. So if my end goal is to have a lifestyle where I weigh 180 pounds, where I'm athletic, where I am, you know, I, I read 20 books a year, where I have a, a prosperous career where you know I have you know I spend quality time with my children or with my wife whatever it is that our goals are then then you have the end in mind and then you start setting up the goals that are going to get you there in order for me to have a better relationship with my wife I need to have more date nights I need to have more one-on-one -on -one conversations I need to you know for her to know my heart for me to know her heart in order for me to weigh 180 pounds I need to be eating better I need to let go of sugar and and and, and soft drinks and bread and tortillas that those hurt but you know we're gonna do it we're we're you know, in order for us to read 20 books a year, then we got to use more of our focus mode. And we need to, you know, stop being three hours on TikTok every night. All these other social medias that we might be getting on. In order for us to have it. So today, I, wanted, I just want to tell you, focus on the future. What, what does your future look like? What, what, is your, what does the end of the year look like for you? 
And I'm going to take you to Job, and, and with this, I'm, I'm going to end. But, you know, the story of Job, many of you know it. If you don't know it, it it's just a, a, a man that, was, that, that had God's favor. He had it all. He had a big family, lots of, lots of children, women and, 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 and uh, boys and girls. And then he had a, a beautiful wife, and he had lots of riches and cattle and everything you can think of. And then the devil went up to God and said, hey, he only serves you and he only worships you because he has it all. And God gave him permission to go mess with him. We see that in the book of Job. And then, uh, so, so then um, what's interesting is that Job came and he said, you know what? I'm going to kill all his children. And then I'm going to make him poor and take all his, all his possessions, all his cattle. And then I'm going to mess with his health. And, and, and I'm, I'm going to give him uh, this uh, terrible disease. And you know what? I'm going to leave his wife. And so I was kind of joking with my wife. And I'm like, how about the devil that said, I'm going to do all this, but I'm going to keep her. I'm like, could it be because he knew that she was just going to pester him about it? And the Bible says the wife got to a point where she said, hey, you need to like, you need to, you need to uh, 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 um, talk about your God. Your God that allowed all this to do it, just curse him and die already. That's the support that Job had. But anyway, that, that's besides the point. The point is that all of this happened to Job. And right before God came to restore his life, and right before God came to do, you know, abundantly more than, than what he had, Job writes in chapter 11, verse 13 to 16, he says, God speaks today, in the God Speaks Today the translation says, make, make your mind to act righteously. And direct your supplications to God. If you are burdened with sin, keep, keep it away. Do not give place to, to it in your household so that you can raise your forehead clean and that you can be calm without fear. You will forget your sufferings and you will forget them like passing water. Now I'm going to read to you a different version, which I kept it here on my phone. And it says it this way. It says, Job 11, 13 through 16, put your heart right. Reach out to God, face the world again, firm and courageous. Then all your troubles will fade from your memory like floods that are past, that are past and remember no more. Put your heart right. We reach out to God, face the world again, firm and and courageous face the world firm and courageous and remember no more your past troubles so before he moved to the future he says I'm gonna have courage to face today what is today like the past is past and if we and if we release and reveal and if we receive, you start receiving healing from the past, now all we have to do is deal with the present. But we're going to be courageous and decisive to face today's battles. Because you see, there are a lot of battles going on today. The battle in your marriage. The battle for your children. The battles in your workplace. The battles in your mind. There are so many things that, you know, that, that we deal with, like, like fears and all kinds of stuff. Last Sunday, we were supposed to play basketball. I decided I'm going to mow a little bit of the yard before I do that. And then a little in insect, in a little um, insect, yes, a little insect named a bee decided to bite me right here. And within like 20 minutes, I broke out in hives all over my neck and on, in my armpits and my stomach and the bottom of my feet were itching and Robert was there and, and he's my boy but I didn't like the fact that he came and he, he pointed to my belly and he said, man, you're starting to really blow up and, <laughs> and you're starting to really get swollen and I'm like, dude, this has nothing to do with it, man, what's, what's, what's up? But, but listen, so, so, so while he was there, I ran to the ER, to the, uh, uh, to the urgent care and then it came back, and so within an hour, I had a, I had a, a shot. But, you know, I came back. They were playing basketball, and for a few seconds, I thought, if I go out there, I could get bit, bit again. And then yesterday, I was mowing 
what weed eating the, the, the yard, and the first thing I thought about is if I go out there, I could get bitten again. There are little things or big things that we face every day. If I go out to work, that coworker is going to be mean to me. If I, if I expose myself, somebody may laugh at me. If I try to start that small business, I might fail. I might lose my money. If I try to study, classes might be too hard for me. What are some of the battles that, that you're facing today? What are some of the, the struggles that, that you're facing today? We, if we take a, 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 a page from Joe, he says, be decisive. Forgive in the past. Forget the past and focus on the future. So today, I want you to start thinking of the end in sight. What are your end goals? What are those goals that you have for five years from now, for 10 years from now? Let's, for, let's forgive, let's forget, let's reveal, let's heal, let's trust God's truth and his promises, and let's strive to go forward to the future to fight the battles that need to be fought today. What are they? For a third grader, there are the fact that his mom passed away that he's living with his grandparents. And maybe when he was bullying my son, that was his way of reaching out for help. I'm talking about a third grader. I'm an adult. So I've decided to pray for this little kid, and we just found out his name, and his name is Santiago. So I decided, Santiago is now on my prayer list. But that's not the only battle. I face insecurities all the time. I face things when I go to work. I face things when, I, when, when, I, when I'm on the street. All the time, just like you. What is your battle? What is your fear? Is it bigger than a bee? All I'm saying is, don't let it stop you from your purpose. Those things will happen. We'll deal with them when they come. We'll go to the urgent care. We'll go to therapy. We'll go and do the work and we'll get better. But we have to keep moving forward, pressing forward to the future, to the purpose that God has for us. So today I want you to stand to your feet and, and we're going to pray. And then uh, Jaime will come up to, to dismiss us and pray for the offerings and things like that. But listen, I, I don't know how you're here today. Maybe... In order for you to be able to forgive somebody, you first need to be forgiven, right? I talked about forgiven people, forgive people. So maybe you're here today and you need to have Christ in your heart and accept his salvation. And that way you can get forgiveness from your sin. You can get forgiveness from anything that you, you may have done. And we only get that through Jesus Christ who died on the cross to pay for your sin, to pay for my sin, to forgive us of our sins. To, to forgive us of our sins and then and then he gave us a promise that if he's our lord and savior then we get eternal life so if that's you today i, I want to pray for you first and then i want to pray for everybody else so everybody close your eyes bow your heads and if you're here today you're watching online and you want to give your life to christ you want to know that you know that you know that you hold on to god's promise of eternal life to god's promise of forgiveness to god's promise of 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 uh of, of healing, God's promise of forgiveness, I want you to raise your hand right where you are. Nobody's watching and, and nobody's judging. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. God bless you. Okay, you can put your hands down. And if you're online, just let us know. And now, everybody, we're all going to pray together because we're a family. So we all pray this, this prayer together. I want to hear you loud. And we're just going to pray uh, uh, together and give our life to to. to God and ask him to forgive us. Say, Heavenly Father, I give you my life. I ask your forgiveness. I accept the gift of your son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross 
to forgive me of all my sins. I accept this gift. I accept his promise of eternal life. Help me to be a better person. Help me on my journey of faith. Help me to forgive others. Help me to heal. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Can, can we give uh, those three people a clap offering? And, and um, so now, now I want to pray for everybody else. And, and, and I, I want to pray for you, and I want you to pray for me, and we're just going to pray for each other because life is hard. And, and, and so, again, we're dealing, everybody's dealing with their own world. We were dealing with, we were dealing with a bully, but on the other side of the bully, there was hurt, there was pain, there was trauma. We don't know what's on the other side of the person that's hurting you. We don't know what's on the other side of, you know, uh, 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 of the pain that you received. I don't know what Juan was dealing with when him and his buddy decided we're going to beat up that kid just because, right? And then, you know, I don't know what it was, and, and, and I can't say that it was right. But I got to forgive. I got to let go. I got to move on. I can't let that keep holding me forever. I can't think there's, my boss is the next one. You know, I, I, I got I to gotta heal from that. I got to reveal it to God. I got to heal. And then I got to replace it with truth. And instead of me thinking like, you know, uh, and me thinking of those times, those years, when I had a thick accent and people were laughing. And then what really got me was when other Latinos were making fun of me and calling me wet back and telling me to go back. And I'm like, well, then your parents have to come back with me too because we're the same, you know, like, what are you talking about? You know, like that irritated the heck out of me and frustrated me. And, 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 and now I'm like, I got to let go of that. Because God has a future and a calling and a purpose, and I got to replace that with saying, hey, I don't care about being an American citizen. I mean, I have it if you need to see it, but I am a citizen of heaven. What's up with that? You want to mess with my daddy? You want to mess with his posse? You want to mess with his angels? Like, you know, my mind is somewhere else right now. My mind is full of purpose. My mind is full of, uh, of his inheritance. So whatever you're dealing with, Whatever hurt you're dealing with, like Jaime said last week, let's expose it, let's reveal it, let's start getting, let, let's start getting, getting healing with one another, and let's start replacing it with the truth that we are loved, we are forgiven. Pray, let's pray right where you are. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for the message today where you are telling us to go deeper and go deeper to, to get that healing that you, that you have for us. Lord, we all live lives that, that, that have trauma, that have pain, that have uh, maybe some bullying, Lord. Maybe we were the bullies. Maybe we were the ones that, that caused pain and trouble for other people. Lord, today we ask that you forgive us and we release those that, that, that hurt us. Lord, we let that go so that we can move on to the purpose and the calling that you have for us. Lord, anybody that called us names, we let it go. Anybody that hurt us, we let it go. Anybody that, that, that laughed at us, we let it go. Anybody, Lord, that just uh, 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 tried to trip us in life, we let it go. We let it go, and we don't seek vengeance. You have seen our tears. You have seen us cry. You have seen us suffer, Lord, and, and you are telling us that you love us, that you care for us, that you want to be our comforter, that you want to give us strength, that you want to give us peace. Lord, so today we come to you and we ask, Lord, give us peace. Give us more love. Give us healing and, and allow us to move on. Lord, I pray for Santiago and his family. Lord, put people around him that love him, that care for him. So allow, allow us to be a church that cares for one another, that loves for one another, that cares for the Santiago's that are out there, Santiago's that are in third grade and Santiago's that are young adults and Santiago's that are already grown adults, Lord, that are hurting because they're hurt. So allow us to, to be the vessel that helps them get to you 
better, a better way to get forgiveness. Lord, thank you for your message. Thank you for your word. Thank you as we go deeper and we get healing and restoration in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Amen. You may be seated. We're about to go home. Time will come up.